you can take my video. Doris, you can take my Applejack. Doris, you can take shirt off me back, but don't, don't, don't. You can take my rhythm and blues Doris, you can take my suit suit too But don't, don't, don't And a condo down in Miami 
I guess the most important influence in my life. Without the Bronx, I wouldn't be the man I am today. It made a tougher person out of me, and uh, it also uh, put me in contact with uh, an amalgamation of different cultures and uh, different musical strains. You yourself are an amalgamation of strains, racially, aren't you? That, that, was that important to you when you were being brought up in the Bronx? Well. Uh, I guess it was important in a, in a strange way. It made me an outcast from the beginning. It, uh, it sort of put me outside of all the, all the groups, all of my comrades. Uh, I was a, a loner for a long period during my uh, early days in the Bronx. Being, being neither black nor white, what did they call you? Well, they had a number of names, but uh, some of the polite ones were half-breed. Uh, you know, the term mulatto, which comes from, is derived from the term mule. Uh, so they would call us mules or mulattoes or uh, uh, a number, as I say, a number of names, some, some, some much uh, more derogative than others. Uh, but we learned to live with it. And uh, actually, in time, we took the term mulatto, which was supposedly uh, a demeaning term, and we used it to put ourselves on pedestals, to put us uh, aside from others and used it proudly. You are regarded as a very fashionable man. Yes. And yet, really, I mean, fashion's changed. You haven't right. changed. You found yeah. that jacket, that kind of jacket in about 69, and there's a story that you were looking for low-crotch trousers. You right. found them in, when was it, 74? 74, 1974, right. And, and you've been wearing that ever since? Yes, ever since. See, I'd been searching for it so long. The earliest photographs you can find of me, you will see me dressed up so that my father always liked to put me in two-piece and three-piece suits. And he, he also plopped chapeaus on my head for, from, from an early age. Uh, and, and, and that love of attire, that love of clothes, grew into uh, searching for the clothes that made my idols look the way they did. So I went looking frantically for that kind of a look that Humphrey Bogart had. And I noticed that the trousers were free-falling and the, 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 the jackets were box-backed and the, and the hats and, and there was something about the material. Whenever I went to a tailor to ask him about lowering the crotch or making the pants bigger, they would all look at me like I was some sort of a, a reject from 1940 and they couldn't understand what I was saying. So it wasn't until 1974 when my brother found these pair of uh, slacks, original antique uh, 1940s, gabardine baggies, and he showed them to me and said, put these on. When I put them on, I said, ah, this is what's been missing all the time. It was the free flowing, uh, the slack, the feel of that. And it was magic. And since I put them on 74, I haven't taken them off. And uh, it's a very relaxed feel. And it made me assume a closer position to my idols. Do you find it strange? Would you expect our audience to find it strange that here this, this crazy guy jumping up and down on the front of stage <laughs> has an academic background, was a bookworm, a self-confessed bookworm? No, I don't think it's, it's too hard to swallow. Uh, perhaps in the past it would have been, uh, but I think we live in, in different times now with different, different influences. The, the danger of today's society, if you really want to get down to it, is that people have moved so far away from literature, from the written word, because of advances in, in, techn in technology. Every step forward is, in a way, a step backward. What we have now is so much of cassette knowledge, cassettes and, and recorded sounds, that people can, can really learn uh, everything they need to, they think, through television, through the media of television, radio, tapes, as I say, pre-recorded tapes. Uh, so what is happening is a disregard for literature today uh, that I find to be disconcerting. But the fact that a man uh, such as myself who loves literature is in front of a, a rock and roll band, if you will, jumping up and down and acting like uh, Cab Calloway on acid, 
is not, in my opinion, a strange thing because it, every man is influenced in different ways. What I try to do is create many screenplays. I try to create a, a scene, a, a story, and try to take uh, some action from point A to point Z in every song. And, it, and to tell you the truth, is the only way that I can go through the exercise of songwriting. I, too, must get a thrill out of it. It, it has to be a rewarding experience for me. I could not be rewarded by writing a song for, uh, that, that uh, takes up four and a half minutes of your life by listening to it, or whoever, does, whoever else listens to it, by just singing, Baby, Baby, I Love You. It doesn't, uh, it doesn't do anything for me. It's not a rewarding experience for me, so consequently, I don't think it could be a rewarding experience for anyone who has to listen to it.
one thing I can't figure out is, who am I talking to now? Am I talking to August Darnell, or am I talking to Kid Creole? Well, you're talking to August Darnell right now, and of course, I have on Kid's clothes. That's, that's nice of him to lend you. I mean, yes. what's the relationship? Well, uh, as the creator, I can say, uh, I did need to create the Kid Creole character. Whether this character I created was going to be a stooge or whether he was going to be a romantic, I think that naturally came out of uh, the August Darnell in me. The August Darnell spirit could not have created a stooge as an alter ego. He would have to be a romantic. Creole justifies a lot of uh, weaknesses that August Darnell may have. So that as August Darnell, I could not look you in the eye and say, yeah, I'm guilty of X, Y, and Z. But in as much as, as, in as, much as I've created Kid Creole, that allows me to express my weaknesses. In the fight, who has the most heart, August Darnell or Kid Creole? The most heart would have to belong to August Darnell because the kid, in that case, will do what he's told. <laughs> <laughs> or I'll kill him off. And I can do that too, you see. The kid can you easily would. drown. Yes, yeah, so we could drown him in one of the many seas, which he travels. You know, the kid is afraid to fly, so he travels in a banana boat. So uh, if he does get out of hand, I'll just kill him off, and we'll have uh, whatever comes after Kid Creole. Top of the heat, top of the pile, top of the low. You're at the top of the heat. 